Heavenly Father, we do thank you that you come to us through your word. And as you speak to us today, we pray that you would help us to see the power that there is in your word. And that power is available to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear friends of Jesus, our Savior. Who knows the mission statement of Christ Lutheran Church and Yuma Lutheran School? We print it every Sunday. It's in the bulletin. I don't even know that, but it's in the bulletin every Sunday. We don't talk about it as much as we should, and I would like us to read it together. We can pull it up on the screen. So the mission statement is for Christ Lutheran Church and Yuma Lutheran School. Let's say it together. Christ Lutheran Church and Yuma Lutheran School exists to make and multiply disciples of Christ who are deployed to share God's love and care for all people. Now, if you don't have that memorized, I'm encouraging you to memorize that this week because it's really important. It's really our take on the Great Commission that Jesus commanded us to keep. Ultimately, we want to make disciples who goes where God leads them, meaning they are deployed to make more disciples. I see our church as a sending church because we have people who come and go, who live in Yuma and they leave. Uh, we have military that do that, but there's other people as well. And so we want to send them, deploy them to continue to serve our Lord wherever they go. But it's not just that. You can be deployed to your workplace. You can be deployed to uh, the community, deployed to your own home to share the love and care of Christ to all people. And we believe that this will happen when all of disciples, all those who believe in Jesus Christ, are in the word, in worship, and are serving. See, when Christ's disciples are engaged in these three disciplines, the church will grow. In fact, I can't help but believe the church will grow. As I said earlier today, we're beginning a sermon series titled, Generous in Every Way. Listen to what we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, beginning with verse 10. It says, now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread, for the food, and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You'll be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Isn't God generous? Because not only does God provide us everything we need physically, he provides everything we need spiritually. And once more, he doesn't do this just to save us. As his disciples, he gives us everything that we have so that we will be generous, especially in matters pertaining to eternity. And I believe one of the greatest investments of our time is spending a generous amount of time in God's word. Now, as I said before, the most important thing we can do with our time is spending it with Jesus in his word. You can't replace that with anything because without being in the word of God, we will never live out the calling that he has for us. And so why is the Bible so powerful? Well, Josiah just explained to the kids, he gave a number of reasons why it's so important. It's powerful because it's the word of God. In John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And so because the Bible is the Word of God, it is alive. God's Word is living. It is filled with the vitality of God himself. In fact, listen to what we read in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. It says, All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness and so just as god breathed into adam the breath of life and he became a living being so god breathed life into the pages of scripture making this book different than any other book we read something very similar in second peter chapter one it says above all you must understand no, no prophecy of scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation for prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So again, it says the Bible is not man's word, although people spoke it. It is God's living word by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Therefore, because God's word is alive, it is creative, it regenerates life, and it sustains life. It's alive. Again, that's what God tells us in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is living and active. Isaiah 55, verse 11, it says, So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Now, if that doesn't motivate us to share God's word with people, I don't know what does, because it says every time the word of God goes out, it will accomplish the purpose for which it was sent. I can't think of anything else that it always accomplishes the purpose for which it was sent, other than God's word. It will accomplish everything God desires because it's his living word. And once more, it's a word that saves. In fact, it's the only way to be saved. In Romans chapter 1, verse 16, it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentiles. And this means that if anyone's going to be transformed, if anyone is going to be changed, it is through the power of the gospel, this good news, and it means they have to hear it. In Romans chapter 10, verse 14, it says, How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? Now you might say, well, I'm not a preacher. That's okay. Teaching, speaking, sharing God's word. The truth is, the more we spend time with God himself with God Himself and his word, we will live out our calling. But if we don't spend time in the word of God, we won't be living out the calling, the calling the way God wants us to live. And once more, if we neglect God's word altogether, we'll eventually die spiritually. It's really a matter of life or death. My friends, God's powerful word is that important. Now, if you're not spending time with God on a regular basis in his word, what keeps you from doing so? Is it your job? Your family? Hobbies? Recreational activities? I can say, to be honest, there are many times I'm very good at spending time each day in God's word, and then something comes up, and then I get away from it, I have to come back to it. So I'm just like you. I struggle with it at times. It's not always easy. I don't always fit it into my schedule like I should. And so is your schedule too full or maybe you just haven't made it a high priority in your life? Is it because you have a hard time understanding it? You start you started reading the word of God and then all of a sudden you're saying, I don't understand all of this. It's hard to understand. And that's why joining a Bible study group or a home group is so helpful. You can learn with others and you can ask questions and learn. So if you're not in a home group with your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, what's your reason? If it's because we, have to, we need to offer more groups or we need to offer more uh, topics or times, then let us know. Let me know or let Debbie Gibbs know who's our home group director and we'll do something about it. We'll do something about it because we look at our simple discipleship pathway, which is very simple. Everyone in the word, everyone in worship, everyone serving. We want more people. In fact, God wants more people to be in his word. God wants each one of us to be in his word because we are spending time with our God who not only saved us, but who continues to sustain our faith and empowers us to live our lives for him. So again, if we're not spending time in God's word, we're not going to be as effective in accomplishing God's mission. And that's why spending time in God's word on a daily basis is not just for us, but also for the people in our community. Have you ever thought of it that way? Not only are we strengthened, but as we then are empowered to go out into the world, we are now making a big difference to the people in our community. Therefore, God wants each one of us to make spending time within him, with him in his word our highest priority. He did it for us. He could have just told us that we're going to die in our sins, but what did he do? He chose to save us. And once more, he saved us through the power of his word. Again, John chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. But then if we go to verse 14, it says, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. 
God sent his son, who is the word, who is the way, the truth, and the life to give us life. And that's what Jesus did. Jesus came into our world of sin and death and paid the penalty that the world deserved, namely death, by going to the cross in our place. Because we were cursed, completely separated from God because of our sin, Jesus on the cross became a curse for us. He exchanged his life for our life. He died the death that we deserved so that we could live. And because God's word is powerful, Jesus is victorious. On the third day, he rose from death to life. And now because he lives, we live. We live because the same living word who is victorious has come to us personally and given us new life. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23 says, For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of the imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord stands forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. See, through this word of God, we have been born anew in Jesus Christ. We are no longer dead in our sins. We are alive in Christ. We are alive. We have been been born new, new in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who is God's word made flesh. One of the keys to staying healthy is exercise. I'm sure you've heard that before. I'm sure many of you have had doctors tell you that, that you need to get some exercise, that you need to either walk or run or swim or bike. You just need to do something. You have to get up, get your heart rate going to stay fit. In a very similar way, we need spiritual exercise in God's Word to stay healthy spiritually, to keep our hearts strong in the Lord and a then to allow God's breath of life continue to breathe into us as we read the Word of God. You see, as we read the Word of God, God's breath of life is breathing into us by the power of the Holy Spirit and is strengthening our faith and empowering us to live our lives for Him and His glory. See, every time we open the Word of God, He is doing this for us. He is keeping us spiritually fit. Jesus is preparing us to be to be deployed on his mission to share God's love and care for all people. Now, when you go out, there will be opposition, which is another reason why it's so important to be armed with the word of God. Jesus tells his disciples that when they go out, they're going to be like sheep among wolves. And once more, he says, you're going to be hated by all kinds of people. Because people will hate them because they're offended by what God's word says. Brother will betray brother, a father is child, and children will rebel against their parents. Jesus says all these things will happen, but he says, don't worry about what you will say. The Holy Spirit will give you the words to say. In fact, Jesus tells his disciples before he leaves, he said, the Holy Spirit will come and remind you of all my words. The Holy Spirit will remind them of the word of God that they have in their hearts. And once again, God's word will always accomplish the purpose for which it was sent. 1 Peter chapter 5, it says, Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. So what did we just read? We read that Satan is out to attack and destroy, but Jesus says resist him by standing firm in the faith. Resist him because as a disciple of Jesus Christ, Satan has no power over you. Do you know that? Because it's true. As a disciple of Jesus Christ, as one who believes in him, Satan has no power over you. You have faith in Jesus Christ, and you have his powerful word. He cannot take you down. Because you have the exact same weapon that Jesus had when he was being tempted in the wilderness. You remember again Jesus being tempted in the wilderness? The, the devil comes to him and tempts him. And every time, Jesus uses the word of God against him and defeats him. And then he had to leave him. And then we read that angels came and attended him. 
And with faith in Jesus Christ, armed with the word of God, Satan will not defeat us, even though he will come at us with all that he has. In fact, if you feel like you're being tempted or Satan is trying to tear apart you or your family, all you have to do is say, in the name of Jesus Christ, Satan, leave, and he has to leave. That's the power of Jesus. If you feel like Satan is trying to tear you or your family apart, dig into God's word, use his word against him, and you will win every time. Because God's word is powerful. That's the power you and I have in his word. Therefore, my friends, let me encourage you to open and read God's word on a daily basis. Read the word. Open up a Bible app if you want to use it electronically. If your translation is too difficult, get a new one. Buy a new one. If you don't have a Bible and you can't afford one, let us know. We'll get you a Bible. Because God is not just suggesting that we spend time with him in his word. He is telling us to be in his word for good reason. Number one, read and study God's word individually. Listen to what he says to Joshua when Joshua is going to be leading his people. He says, do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Now, in the Old Testament, when he's talking about the book of the law, he's talking about the whole word of God. He's not talking about the law in the narrow sense. The law meaning that the law shows us our sins. It's talking about the whole word of God. So do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. And then in Psalm 1, 1 to 3 says... Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whether he, what, whatever he does prospers. So every time you're in the word of God, it's like you're a tree planted near the water and God is feeding you and keeping you alive so that you will produce fruit. God promises that when we spend time with him in his word, we will prosper by living the life that God wants us to live. And this is not just for adults, this is for everyone. If you can read, let me encourage you to read God's word every day single day whether you're a child or, a teen, or whether you're a teenager high school doesn't make any difference let me encourage you to read god's word every single day last thursday i was invited to southwestern christian school to a pastor's appreciation breakfast and i was sitting at a table of third graders had a lot of fun and there was a boy at the table telling me that he reads his bible every day third grade he reads his bible every day and he was telling me the best parts of the bible that he knows now, that should be an inspiration to all of us, a third grader doing that. How awesome. He does that on his own. Now, I'm sure he does it with his parents at times, too, but oh, he's telling that he gets his Bible out and he reads it on a daily basis. Now, I'm sure there are times he misses, but the fact that third grade, he's reading God's Word, I was just very impressed by that. Number two, read and study God's Word as a family. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. God makes it very clear that we need to be reading God's word as a family, that we need to be talking about God's word as a family. If I could go back and change one thing as we were raising our children, I would spend more time with our children in God's word. And so if you're a parent, make the commitment to read God's word to your children. Talk about it. And press it on your children so that they will not depart from it. It's that important. If you're married, spend time with your spouse in God's word and in prayer. Because not only will it keep your relationship as husband and wife strong, it will also keep your relationship with the Lord strong. Number three, read and study God's word with fellow believers. I've heard many people say the Bible is hard to understand at times. And don't study by yourself. Study with other Christians. And your faith will grow 
as you listen to them, as you hear them, and then there will be those who will learn from you as you disciple them. Acts chapter 2, beginning with verse 41, it says, Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling the possessions and goods they gave to anyone as he had need. And so as the Christian church is growing, there are a couple of things they were doing that caused the growth. They spent time together studying God's word. Most of the time, it was in people's homes. And so that's why we're emphasizing home groups, because not only do you get to know people in their home, you can then begin to invite people in your neighborhood, people in our community, to join you as well. They heard God's word in worship. Again, when they worshiped it, a lot of times it was worshiping in people's homes as this early Christian church started. And they served by giving to those in need. And as the church grew, and the church grew because they became generous in every way with the gospel of Jesus Christ. My friends, I pray this for us because as we exercise the spiritual discipline of being in God's word, I believe without a doubt, not only will we do what God has called us to do, by being generous in every way with our time, as we spend time with God in word, in worship, we will also serve others and we will give of our resources so that ultimately we will make disciples who make disciples who will then reach more people for Christ in our community and around the world. To God be the glory. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.